Hello everyone, this is Ian Shaver here, and we are just about ready to dive into our profitability and WIP reporting webinar today. Now it does look like we actually have a, a large list of attendees joining us today. And to make sure that everybody's able to see and hear us clearly today, I'd like to pause for a couple of moments and kind of draw you guys into a few important areas, both in GoToWebinar and on the screen that we're looking at today. Um, now, on the GoToWebinar interface, as we're diving into this, you guys should find an area on there marked questions. In that questions panel, I need you guys to take a moment for me, if you would, and tell me a little bit about what you guys hope to get out of the session today, what you guys would like to cover, and I'm going to pause for just a couple of minutes as you guys are finding and entering that information so that I can make sure that our last few attendees are able to get logged in and uh, get everything connected properly. So we're putting us on a brief hold, and we'll be back with you in just a couple of moments, guys. All right, everyone, thanks for your patience. I believe we've got everybody in the session now, so we should be ready to go ahead and get started. Now, once again, just like before, if you guys don't mind, take a moment to find the hand raising option on there. There should be a little area where you can raise your hand to uh, just indicate to me that you guys were able to see me. I actually see some of my coworkers in here throwing their hands up and down now. <laughs> uh, but again, let's just go ahead and make sure that everybody's able to see and hear. We also want to make sure that this has a good uh, video and recording, uh, video and audio quality for YouTube. We're going to be posting this as soon as we're finished. Now, <clears throat> to get started, once again, my name is Ian Schaefer. I'm one of the senior product specialists here at UDA Technologies. I'm also a QuickBooks Pro advisor, and today we're going to be examining some of the things that we provide through UDA, through Construction Suite specifically, for managing profitability on your jobs, for tracking things like estimate versus actuals, and for diving into some of the reporting features like the work in progress that we provide through Construction Suite to make sure that you guys are hitting your targets. I also have with me my colleague Jordan, who is one of our top sales representatives here at UDA Technologies. Uh, Jordan's going to be sharing with us some of the experience that he's garnered in working with some of the new clients coming in to take a look at the, uh, the UDA platform platform and uh, hopefully some of the changes that you've seen in some of your clients that you've brought in as well. Um, so with that too, just to, uh, before we dive in, it looks like we already have a lot of conversations going on through the questions area. It will just be myself and Jordan today, so we're going to be tackling these questions as we can through the webinar itself. Uh, we'll also be answering a lot of these actively or at the end of the webinar. So again, if you guys don't hear an answer or, or uh, have that question addressed in the beginning, don't worry, we see them, we're holding them, and I promise we will touch on them at least to some degree uh, before the webinar is complete today. Uh, also, just a, a quick review of our topics before we dive in itself. Um, I am a QuickBooks Pro advisor. I have a lot of familiarity working with things, but today we're focusing on what UDA provides. So there's a lot of accounting practices that we may not touch on heavily right now. If you have follow-up questions about it, again, by all means, reach out to us, or we may be able to, to direct you to some of our UDA advisors, which are also QuickBooks Pro advisors. I can see several of you guys have joined us today as well, which glad to see you again. Um, but uh, we can direct you to somebody in your area perhaps for a little bit further assistance. Um, now again, today, profitability and WIP, which means that a lot of the work that we're going to be doing today is going to deal with QuickBooks and the QuickBooks integration from Construction Suite with our estimates and everything like that. Now to begin with, before I dive into too much, we're going to touch on some of these dashboard elements. And uh, before I get too far into it myself, Jordan, why don't you tell me a little bit or why don't you tell our, our audience here a little bit about um, why these dashboards are valuable or what we're looking at here and why you see people using them or gravitating to these dashboards themselves. Absolutely. Thanks so much for the gracious introduction, Ian. and. Uh, Thanks for explaining a little bit about what I have been up to uh, during my time here at UDA. I would say that people gravitate towards these dashboards because honestly all of this information is available in Construction Suite. Uh, obviously all of the information that it's pulling is somewhere here in the program. But in order to put all of this together, you might need to hire somebody as a business analyst to actually come in and figure out what questions to ask, which numbers to pull. Uh, but we've taken our experience that we've gained through working with hundreds of thousands of clients over the years and really put that together for you to really give you the business intelligence that you need to make great decisions moving forward in order to bring much more success to your business. And just from looking at this one dashboard here, uh, imagine the time and all of the Excel formulas and, and tweaking of, 
uh, all sorts of displays that you would have to, to do in order to get anything remotely close to this. Of course, some of you might be Excel wizards and more power to you, but uh, for the construction professional out there who wants to get in and really figure out what they need to do to get back out and building, this is the place for you. Mm. Yeah, and, and along those lines too, we do a lot of overview tools and resources. Uh, again, I mentioned the YouTube channel earlier. We do try to provide a lot of these kind of um, self-help tools and resources just in case you guys are interested in seeing this. Don't forget as well that you can always reach us here at UDA Technologies. Just go up to the help menu in your construction suite software, take a look under contact information, and you'll be able to find emails, phone numbers, and a variety of other uh, options for reaching out to us for assistance uh, along with that YouTube channel and some of our uh, like help guides and things like that. Now again, just a, a brief touch on these uh, dashboard elements themselves. Uh, from the main today page in Construction Suite, you're going to have a wide variety of different tools that are going to be available to you guys right here. And like Jordan said, this is really to provide a lot more insight on the inner workings of the company itself so that you can have more educated gut checks later when you guys are putting together some quick numbers. As an example, from the dashboard page itself, we've got a cost breakdown for our projects. This is just giving us a rough distribution on how much money we allot for each of our jobs and where that tends to go following the five main classifications. Some of you will probably also use these classifications as accounts in QuickBooks. Bit of a different topic there, but it's still a good practice. I see it happen very, very often. And uh, in this case, if you're looking at a project and it doesn't fit this distribution, you'll know to go into and recognize something might be a little bit of off for the job. Now, you'll also notice down in the bottom right-hand corner of this, I say bottom right-hand, it takes up the majority of this space, actually. Um, but this is our profitability graph that we're looking at here. Uh, again, for this one, with the Premier and Catalyst versions of Construction Suite and above, it's going to show you the base estimates, estimated value, which is the base estimate, plus or minus any change orders that have cropped up. You'll also see where we've started tracking our actual costs, invoiced amounts, and committed costs. Uh, some of these graphs have noticeable values on this, but we have a couple of large jobs in this. This is an example from a company that does some large-scale commercial projects, residential projects, new construction, and then a couple of small projects as well, like this Donner patio over here, or the office remodel that we've got over on the far right-hand side. Uh, these, this, this distribution, of course, does sometimes need to be filtered down, and you'll notice that there's a lot of filter options on the page itself. So here in the top right-hand corner, if we decided to go from show all to picking a particular type of project, we might be able to uh, better adjust this profitability graph so that we can see where we stand on just residential new construction or remodeling projects, or maybe just our commercial division, or whatever it might be. You'll also notice up at the top that we can start adjusting the projects for the distribution as well. The cost breakdown is going to be different depending on the type of job you're doing. Maybe on the large-scale commercial jobs, you've got a lot more subcontractors working with higher dollar value components or parts of those projects. This would skew it for the small residential projects that you guys might be working on. So again, you have the option to filter these things down to get, once again, better insight or better business intelligence for those aspects of the company that are going to be operating. Now you'll also notice as we move across from here, we've got a company overview, which is a, an aggregate report that shows you a lot of excellent information regarding the types of jobs or the project groups themselves that you're working in. This is one of the main pieces that we do with project groups. As you're working with these project groups, if you ever have a question what you should be doing with those, take a look at this report. It's going to give you some great ideas on what you can do and how to chop up those jobs to figure out where you're making money, where you're spending money, and what to plan for moving forward. Uh, again, we're going to be touching on this in just a few mi minutes as well, but the Work in Progress report page shows you where you stand with all of your jobs at any given time. Again, heavily based on some of the information that you guys are going to be pulling in through QuickBooks. So as we're looking at the WIP report, just to give you a rough idea of what we're touching on as we go, this is going to give you a breakdown not only of your original estimated cost for the job itself, but it's also going to track your current job cost budget, how much you're, you've spent, to date, how much is left to spend, if that's going to meet your estimated cost to complete, and so on. So again, in the beginning, lots of estimate versus actuals, type of information or type of details. As you move across in the WIP report itself, you're going to notice that we start to track profitability on these jobs. We're going to track things like slippage or grippage, which is really just a, a, an idea of how 
close to our target estimate we were going to be. If we're too high or too low, it's going to affect a couple of different things. So this number should give you a rough approximation for where you stand. And if you're hitting plus or minus 2%, I'd say you're close enough to being on the money that you're doing a great job. If it's too far away from that, too, too far in the negative, that probably means you're losing more money than you should. Uh, if it's too far in the positive, it probably means that you're estimating too high and you might be estimating yourself out of jobs. So this one number right here in the middle of the WIP report is a great indicator for how accurate your, your uh, estimating is. It also gives you a clear idea of whether or not you need to start finding ways to make up ground on jobs. If you're ever halfway through a job and this number is already starting to get out of control, uh, needs a little bit of time and attention, maybe you need to have another sit down with a project manager or a site super or something like that and kind of rein in what's going on. Or maybe we drill into it and figure out if uh, maybe the bookkeeping side of the company is just getting a little gung-ho with putting in all the bills and everything like that. Could mean a couple of things, but it definitely tells you that we need to pay a little bit more attention. Now again, as we move a little bit farther, we start to look more on the estimate versus invoiced side or the invoiced versus uh, actuals. These are, again, reports that we generate in Construction Suite and reports that you guys might be able to get out of QuickBooks as well. Uh, you definitely get them out of QuickBooks as well. But in this case, we break down the information in a little bit more of a 30,000-foot view, if you will. We're looking at projects as a whole through the WIP report so that we can get a better feel for where we stand billing-wise. And in that case, you'll notice that as we're looking through this, you'll see our cost plus earn profit. That's where we stand right now. Uh, how much money have we made versus what we've spent. Total invoice to date. And this is going to help us track our um, over and under billings. As we're moving through this, you'll actually notice that the remaining contract value is here as well, remaining costs. All of these things are going to be available in the WIP report. You'll also find that all of the tabs or all of the columns in the WIP report have a little explanation when you hover over them as well. If you're curious what this one provides or what this is supposed to be calculating, just hover over the little column header here and it'll actually tell you not only how it does it, but uh, in some cases it'll kind of give you a rough idea why you want to pay attention to this piece of information. Now you'll also notice looking through the WIP report itself as, as you open it up and as you kind of pan through it and take a look at all the details and everything like that, you'll be able to right click on the column headers to turn on or off various different pieces of information as you're working through the WIP. Again, very valuable, especially when you are trying to, to provide a report like this to the bank to maybe get an extra line of credit. A lot of banks, if you provide something like this, they'll be able to go through and see in a much clearer way how you guys are doing as a company and it makes it much more appealing for the bank to go ahead and lend to you guys because it shows that you're prepared, that you pay attention, and that you guys have all your ducks in a row. Along those lines though, some banks of course require different things out of the WIP report or, or, or a report like this. So we give you the ability to right click and turn on and off various different columns and when you do so you'll also be able to export it to Excel which just gives you an easier way to print or chop up the numbers as well. So again, plenty of detail here, plenty of depth. And as we're working through this, you'll also notice at the top, we've got some little dashboard elements as well that once again, just give you this kind of bird's eye view. Company as a whole, how are we doing profit wise? Well, according to this, our gross profit is a little over 21%. If our target number is 20%, eh, we're doing pretty well. In this case though, it looks like our original is 21%, but our current target or, or our current numbers are actually closer to about 19 and a half, which means that we're missing our target by about a percentage and a half or a point and a half, well, almost two points in fact. Maybe a little less happy in this case because that 2% represents a pretty significant dollar amount, especially when you take a look over on the left hand side when we put total remaining in production, remaining gross profit in here, 2% of a $2.5 million number is a pretty substantial piece, not something that we want to give up. So again, in this case, we might want to go into and take a look through the items themselves, figure out in the job where it's important and where it's not. Now along those lines, again, this is a bird's eye view. And as such, you'll notice a blend of different types of jobs. Again, we're looking at um, some commercial, some residential, uh, we've got a little tiny remodeling project in here as well. Um, so diving into this, when, when we're looking at the books, um, Jordan, again, quick rough idea here. How often do you see companies uh, become UDA users 
who work on a variety of jobs like this, like a mix of residential or commercial or, you know, some small jobs, big jobs, warranty work maybe. How often does this happen or come up in the sales consul uh, the consultation period? Far more than you might expect. Uh, honestly, I would say I've yet to run into a company that has not done another type of job, whether they just focus all on one specific commercial arena or not. Um, typically, the companies that I've seen coming in do have a variety of different jobs, uh, especially if you start drilling down, they might have very, very large commercial jobs, but like you were saying, there might be some warranty work. Uh, in fact, before this webinar, I just got off of the phone with uh, a potential uh, new client. Uh, they were pretty excited to learn about some of our scheduling features, but uh, she was letting me know that, in fact, they do not only do ground up work, but they also do have some uh, very, very small, very quick uh, warranty uh, work come into play. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's actually uh, pretty coincidental timing. I'm almost suspicious you were listening <laughs> in. <laughs> Probably only a little bit. Um, but just to give you an idea, too, since, since I've been working with UDA, which has been about eight years now, um, maybe a little bit more, I can never get that time frame right anymore, uh, we've actually had a wide variety of clients coming in. We've got people who do uh, you know, small repair work, perhaps just going out to a job site or a customer's uh, location and, and fixing some door hardware or replacing a window or something something like that, writing an invoice on the spot and, and, and sending it off. Um, we've all, also got larger companies that build entire hotel chains from the ground up or resorts. Uh, we've got a group in China that does um, uh, theme parks uh, and, and things like that too. Large projects, lengthy projects. And what you'll find with the WIP report is, at, by default, it shows you everything. It's showing you all the things for, for stuff that's going on for your jobs. And sometimes this can be, I suppose, a little bit useful. But when we're reporting off of these as a whole, you generally want to try to focus the WIP report into projects that you can actually take action on. So again, the smaller projects, the ones that are done within a few weeks or maybe a month or so, generally not an actionable project if you need to make up ground. Hopefully those aren't the kind of, ground, the, the kind of jobs where you guys slip on anyway um, because they're quick to execute and they're quick to estimate and everything like that. But in the WIP report, our goal is to take a look at jobs that are going on for a longer period of time, typically two or three months or more. In that WIP report then, you're gonna be looking at large dollar transactions, typically. The, the, the actual costs might skyrocket for a $7 million job, for example, like we have here on the uh, Hyatt Plaza. We may end up spending a half a million dollars to a million dollars over the course of a month, just getting things paid for or purchased and held on the job site. We might have all of this different information coming in. That quickly eclipses a project like this $10,000 patio project. And as such, Construction Suite has some handy options up here in the top left corner to adjust what appears in the WIP report. Now again, as we're looking through this, you've got a number of different options. Just click on the configuration wheel up in the top left corner and you can hide projects that haven't started yet. You can show projects that are started but not completed, and maybe keep the completed projects, especially if you're printing this out for an organization like uh, Remodelers Advantage, or if you guys have meetings in NAHB or an area and you guys want to share some of the results, or even if you're sending it to the bank to get, again, that line of credit. Keep those completed jobs and the started jobs, but maybe not the ones that are in the backlog yet. You can also go through and adjust time frames as well. As I mentioned, four to six weeks, not really enough time to, to act on anything that the WIP report is going to provide, definitely pay attention to those jobs. But as far as the WIP itself is concerned, maybe we need to slide that up. Let's say maybe anything more than about six weeks becomes a little bit more valuable. You can also then come down and say, and jobs more than, let's say, $20,000 in this case. As you go through and you apply some of these filters, you'll notice that it kind of strips away some of the detail or the depth of the WIP report itself. And that way we've got a more focused view on what it is that we need to pay attention to and where we can take action to correct some of the imbalances that we might be seeing both in our accounts and in the additional detail there as well. Now, again, all of this information is going to be available and trackable. Again, as I mentioned earlier, you'll be able to print it or export it to Excel if you guys wanted to adjust the numbers a little bit further before you send it off, maybe add a little bit of, uh, more information down at the bottom. You'll also have this really, really handy option to do snapshots. Now, looking through some of the, the topics 
that uh, some of you were interested in learning about today, snapshots may actually be a clear catch for, for a fair few of you guys. Uh, as you're looking through these, the snapshots just allow you to, to literally take a snapshot of the WIP report at any given time, memorize that, and store it so that you guys can track either weekly or monthly progression through this. Or some of you, I know you guys want, might want to go through and take a look quarterly on your jobs to see what kind of traction you're getting on those projects as well. My recommendation is to set these snapshots to run every month. And that way, at the beginning of each month, you'll get a snapshot of where you stood typically for the last month or the month before. Now, I say that because, again, different companies have different requirements for billing. Uh, some companies might try to get all the bills in and pay them by, let's say, the tenth of every month. Some companies put the bills in as soon as they get them. Other companies might actually wait and pay bills quarterly. Again, it depends on the type of company you're doing. So you'll want to adjust this a little bit. But I find that monthly is a pretty good average. And the beauty of these snapshots is, at any given point, you can open up and view an old snapshot to see what might have been in there. Looks like not much in this case. But you still have the WIP options and the export and the printing options. This then gives you the ability to compare where you are now to where you were at a specific date and time. So if you're going through and you're setting up these snapshots, you can create the automatic snapshots to basically store this information for you again daily, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, something like that. You can also take a snapshot at any given time. So once again, as you guys are putting this information together, let the system help you a little bit. Tell it to go ahead and automate this process, and that way we're gathering up a little bit more information. And in this case, this is more really, really valuable information for tracking how much money you guys are making on the job. Um, so again, all of this information is going to be available from the WIP report itself. The engine that drives the WIP report, though, is all going to be estimating and QuickBooks integration. So let's take a step over now to the estimates on these jobs. And a uh, quick tip in this case, if you're ever looking at the WIP report and you guys need to get into an estimate from the WIP, all you have to do is click on the name of the job. The job will actually give you an option to open up the primary estimate for that job. And when you do, it opens up the primary estimate from OnCost and starts to give you guys all the detail and the depth and everything that goes along with that. So while this guy is opening up, let's take a look through, again, some of the topics that we have. I'll need to clear away some of these that we've already taken care of. Um, but again, there's a few different questions on here about um, analyzing the WIP report. How often should we take our snapshots from the WIP? How often should we look at the WIP? Um, how do we make sure that the correct estimates are in the WIP report and not copies? Uh, again, the WIP report itself populates entirely by the primary estimate on, every, on any job. Now, if you guys are anything like me, I have several different estimates on every job I touch. There's always going to be my, my, my uh, preliminary estimate, the one that I put together based on the original scope for the job. There's going to be a little bit of a negotiation that goes into the project itself, so maybe numbers are going up and down a little bit, perhaps. So I'll have one copy, which is my original, one which becomes the negotiated contract. And then as we start to make further adjustments, let's say we're doing subcontract or buyout and everything, this is going to adjust our job cost budget a little bit. And as we're making those adjustments, that might be my third copy. Now that third copy will be my primary estimate. That's the living document for the estimate at this point or for the project that starts tracking everything that's gonna be happening on that job. So again, if at any given point you need to make sure that you have the right one, go click on your job, take a look under either recent files or the project files, and if you find the estimate there that you want to use as a primary, if it's not already marked as such, simply right click on it and you'll have an option to make that the primary estimate. Now in this case, if you only have one and it is the primary, no need to concern yourself with it. It's already the primary. You can't make the primary the primary again. It becomes a little redundant in that case. So we can skip over that part. But again, when you're looking at the job itself, there should always be one primary estimate. There's only ever one estimate. That's the primary estimate. And that's the one that shows up on the whip. So great question there. Um, as far as the frequency goes, again, my personal preference or my recommendation is look at the whip no more than about twice a month for like a serious meeting to go through and evaluate. Once typically after all the bills get entered in and you guys open up and refresh all the estimates, once maybe near the end of the, the month so that you can start planning your corrections moving forward. Um, so again, big important pieces. And now let's take a moment for, uh, to uh, take a look at where the detail and the depth comes in. 
Um, so to do this, we need to make sure that we have the estimate open for the job. And we've got to have QuickBooks open as well. And QuickBooks, of course, in part because I'm a little biased here. Um, I, I am a QuickBooks Pro Advisor, so I always go to lean on QuickBooks. But, uh, but in this case, we find that it's pretty prevalent. That's been my experience. Jordan, what, what about you? How often do you see new clients coming in either with no accounting system looking to pick something up or using QuickBooks as a whole? Um, I'm not looking for a rough, well, maybe we are looking for a rough percentage. Is it is it as common as I believe it is, or is it just people give me all the QuickBooks users? <laughs> I would uh, hate to throw out a, a made-up statistic, uh, so I will actually go with a, a gut check, but honestly, it is an overwhelming majority. I can't tell you... Um, well, I can tell you that it is dangerous uh, to make assumptions about other people, especially clients, but um, it is always safe to ask what type of uh, accounting system they're using. And I would say almost every single time uh, our clients or potential clients point to some version of QuickBooks, more often than not QuickBooks desktop, which is what we're looking at today. Mm. Uh, that's very that's very true. Um, now this again, what we're focusing on today, it's all in Construction Suite Desktop, which only integrates with QuickBooks Desktop. Uh, if you guys are interested in taking a look at some of the QuickBooks integration for maybe QuickBooks Online, I saw that come up for some of our pro advisor uh, friends out there. This as we started um, with QuickBooks Online, we're going to be integrating through Construction Online, and we're happy to take you guys through a lot of those options if you're ever interested in seeing it. We'll also, uh, I believe, we're going to be doing a webinar specifically on the QuickBooks Online integration or Qu uh, QuickBooks integration options for Construction Online again here in the very near future. We did the three scoops, but this one is going to be a new one where it's a little bit more focused and specific to it. So again, touch base with us if you guys have any questions about that one, or keep an eye on the emails. You'll be getting the notification or the announcements for that one sh shortly. Um, now, back to the construction suite estimate though. Again, a lot of us are using QuickBooks. I'm assuming since most of you guys are in here to look at the QuickBooks integration, then a lot of you guys are using QuickBooks too. Um, and along those lines, there's several options for how to integrate with QuickBooks, and it's all going to take place from within the estimates in construction suite, typically the primary estimate for a job. Now to begin with, as hopefully most of you guys have had the opportunity to do, in the QuickBooks integration menu within the estimate itself, you'll have an option here to set your initial configuration to communicate with QuickBooks. Now, I know several of you guys asked about construction work in progress as well, WIP accounting, which is a little different than WIP reporting. Um, if you're looking for the WIP accounting settings, we have the default settings set up here as well. Just select the construction work in progress configuration instead. This is going to generate everything. Instead of a COGS or an expense account, everything is going to point to um, asset accounts of some form. Everything that you buy becomes an asset to the company until you use it. Once you do, it becomes part of a liability, which is the job itself, and the liability will remain on the books until, again, you sell the completed project, or if you guys are working on multi-year projects, until it's done and you can actually write it off and, and move it over to income or whatever it might be. Now again, if you're not sure which of these to use, I find a general rule of thumb is every six, uh, if your projects tend to last no more than about six to eight months, then, and, and you do progress invoicing for your customer as you guys go through the job, chances are it's going to be cost of goods sold. I know we don't like to make up statistics, although I think like 78% of statistics are made up on the spot. Um, but I do find, again, overwhelming majority of our clients are going to be using cost of goods sold or COGS instead of work in progress. If you're not sure, ask your accountant. If you are sure, double check with your accountant. They'll be able to tell you the right set and it is sometimes region specific and sometimes depending on the industry that you're in, the government ha might have certain requirements for how you guys organize this stuff. It does affect things like taxes and, and everything like that or just the way you present the information. It's a little different. Now that said, since most of us are gonna be using COGS for, for our outgoing accounts, income account for our income, We'll just use some of the default settings. Again, cost of goods sold is the style of accounting that I'm going to be doing. For me, I like to use just a single account and then map every item over in QuickBooks. So that's a step that might happen later. In my case, I'll just choose the single account and it is a COGS account. On the items list, we're going to be using a, items in QuickBooks for every category and subcategory. Now again, these decisions that we're making right now, 
they are following the standard recommendations for UDA technologies. We've been making these recommendations now for 15 years, uh, as long as we've been integrating with QuickBooks. It's, I, I think it's 12 to 15 years that we've been a gold certified developer. Um, so about that time frame. It also tends to fall in line with some of the most, um, most common accounting instruction programs like uh, QuickBooks Made Easy out of Atlanta teaches it this way. Uh, William Murphy, who writes for Intuitive Accountant, or used to at least, um, he, uh, he recommends this as well simply because we follow the same, the same process. We've also got some uh, QuickBooks training uh, academies that provide the same kind of detail. As a collective, we tend to follow these same patterns. They tend to be fairly standard for construction accounting. And that standard is use your categories, use your subcategories. The items themselves in the estimate might be a little bit of overkill. Again, once we're pushing this over to QuickBooks, I personally like to see planning as an item with sub items, design services, permits, lot costs, and construction financing, anything deeper than that you start to spend a little bit too much time trying to track the pennies on your nails and not enough time tracking your overall profit. Um, the other one that I think we were talking about in, uh, you mentioned the meeting on Monday, Jordan, um, we also talked about planning for success. If you are managing all of this information correctly and you guys are tracking your profitability, you won't have to spend as much time trying to figure out how much money you spent on nails and drops of paint or, or anything like that. You'll be able to focus more on how to go out and achieve on your next job what small steps you might need to adjust in your process to make sure that the next job is just as profitable as this one we just finished. So again, plan for that success and it will show up. In this case, use this level of detail. Now as you're going through and you're taking a look at these, by the way, that information that we're going to be choosing to send over to QuickBooks will show up in the QuickBooks items list. It will show up on a lot of the transactions that we're pushing over to QuickBooks as well. These transactions would include QuickBooks estimates, QuickBooks invoices, purchase orders, change orders, and credit memos, all of those will stop at the subcategory level of detail. There's not going to be a whole lot of individual, what construction suite would call line items. Those tend to get left off. What does this mean? In this case, construction suite is going to be going and retrieving the same information and pulling it back at the same level. And when you're looking at those reports, what you'll see in construction suite is items like design services, which was estimated at 57.75, so far we've spent 27.50, and we've got a variance of 27.50 as well. This is all happening at the subcategory level, so the best place to look for this information is going to be the project totals page. If we decide to drill down into the line into the subcategory itself, you'll notice some of them, which are detailed, have the actual cost at the subcategory level. It looks like we're over budget on this one. But again, that's just because most of these calculations are happening as bottom line calculations instead of line item variants. Again, the difference there between those is for line item variants, if we've got an estimated cost and we've got an actual cost, then we can calculate the difference. If we don't have an actual cost, line item variance doesn't calculate. To give you an idea of what this looks like, you can always switch back and forth between these two types. Just go up to the tools menu, go to options, and there's a checkbox here to use line item variance. Now again, situationally appropriate for a lot of you guys. Sometimes it makes sense and it definitely makes the estimate look a little strange if you're not accustomed to what you're looking for. Because in this case, it's going to say that we're not over budget on anything that we haven't started yet. We also don't have anything left to spend on the things that we haven't started yet. That's because we haven't started spending on them. It's not tracking these costs yet. You'll also notice that where we do have costs, they appear to be over budget again, but that's only because we didn't estimate at the same level that, we that we're doing our job costing here. Again, it's correct situationally. Sometimes you guys may need to work with something like this. And if you guys ever notice a situation in your estimate, there's a word again, um, where the numbers seem to be an exact copy of the actual cost but negative, go check that option. Again, go to Tools, Options, take a look for that line item variance. If it's set and you don't mean to have it set, just uncheck the box. And that way you can track better the costing on the job itself. Now, uh, as we move on again, that's job costing. Invoicing, using the purchase orders through QuickBooks integration to track your committed costs, all of that once again happens through the QuickBooks integration tab. If you send over invoices and purchase orders to QuickBooks, 
then Construction Suite will be able to pull reports off of that and it comes back into Construction Suite using the import options here. You don't have to make them from Construction Suite in order to get them into QuickBooks. If you guys go to QuickBooks and you make them by hand, Construction Suite will still be able to track it. This means that if you guys have a rich history in your QuickBooks company file and you're just now picking up Construction Suite and you want to tie into that, no problem. It's going to work out really well for you guys because as long as the naming matches up or as long as we help you guys, uh, we work through to kind of configure these things to line up with the same items and everything like that, everything is going to fill in the right buckets, as it were, for tracking our spending, for tracking our invoiced amounts, um, and for tracking our purchases as well. So again, most of this information is going to be in there. And as you guys are going through, keep in mind, the, uh, the actual costs will go as deep as they can. The invoiced amounts will do the same thing, committed costs as well. And by that, I mean, if you've estimated, invoiced, and you are spending at the category level, Construction Suite will show you your actual costs at the category level. If you're invoicing, estimating, and spending money, or you've got actuals at the subcategory level, then Construction Suite will pull that information back, and QuickBooks and Construction Suite will know that it's going to be as deep as the subcategories. That's as deep as we go. If you guys do itemize everything, your accountant probably hates you. But on the bright side, Construction Suite and QuickBooks will actually take it into the line item level of detail as well. You'll actually see all the information showing up down here. Now again, some of you guys, works really well for you. Some of you probably don't intend to have this happen. And if you're getting that and you don't want it, go up to the initial setup, change the item level of detail when you're sending it over to QuickBooks, and it will adjust accordingly. Now, pulling it back into profit. We have a special sheet at the end of our estimates for most of our profits, but there's also other places that you can put in profits too, like the line item markups. Um, Jordan, in this case, when you're going through and you guys are trying to make money on the various different jobs, is there a situation where you want to use one or the other or both, or do you even have a preference? You, Jordan. Personally, or just what I've experienced working with different clients? I, I would say, um, for the general, I guess, population of clients that I've worked with, um, they'll typically start out having an idea of their profitability and their profit, honestly, their margin that they want to make on the job. Uh, in that case, then we're definitely going to point them towards what I think you were uh, going to go to, which is our company overhead and margin section at the end of the estimate. Now, there are a few cases, uh, not to uh, derail us, but there are a few cases where the line item markups uh, are critical if you are trying to program in some profitability into different parts of the estimate. Um, and I think what we probably should do is take a look at how to really start planning from the beginning to really shoot towards a certain profitability on your job with the company overhead and margin section, and then maybe talk a little bit about the line item markups, you know, when you're looking at things like change orders. Yeah, that's perfect, actually. And it's a good point. A again, same as before, sometimes you will need a line item markup for something. For those of you guys who are working on setting a process, setting a plan, most of you are going to be working with the company overhead margin section, which is going to be at the very end of the estimate itself. So if you click on the drop-down menu here in the top uh, portion of the navigation here, category by category, company overhead margin is going to be the last category sheet in the estimate, typically. And when you go take a look at the company overhead margin sheet, your goal here is to set the percentage that you guys want overall for things like gross profit, or if you're doing cost plus projects, maybe this is the area that you'll find the percentage um, that you guys apply as a markup to whatever it is that you're selling. Now again, we were looking at the, the WIP report earlier. In the WIP report, it said that we were shooting for about a 22% gross profit. Right now, the cost of this job is about 80%, and we're going to get a 20% profit on this job, meaning 20% of the contract is going to us, the company, the other 80% is being invested in the job itself, and that's our split. But that doesn't quite line up with what we're shooting for. What we're shooting for is 22, so maybe this is where we start to push up those points. Now, again, as we're looking through this, I have selected percent margin. This tends to be most applicable for uh, fixed cost contracts. Uh, cost plus, you're probably going to be using percent of costs instead. That just says the subtotal for the job is uh, however much it is, and we're going to add 8% on top of that. That's how the percent of costs calculation works. Percent margin is a little different. This one is going to set aside a part of the contract value and say that percentage 
is going to be our collective for company overhead. Now, there's still 92% of that contract left. So now if we come down and take a look at company margin, another 10% is going to go toward the company profit margin, leaving us 82%. Now, again, contingency comes into play here. That's 2%. So you set aside the 2% of the contract amount for contingency. The other 80% is the contract amount itself. Now, if we want to change that, we can come into and adjust maybe our profit numbers. This would be net profit, hopefully increase this to be maybe 12% is our target. And this now gives us that overall 22%. If it's 21, you can adjust to be 21%, 22%, whatever it might be. Now again, you'll notice that previously, when this was 10%, our company overhead percentage was $39,000. Changing this to 12% makes company overhead go up. But in this case, we were just changing the profit margin. Now again, this is correct. And what it's trying to do here is it's trying to show you that the 8% for your overhead has to increase because there's more money coming in and we have to maintain 8% of the contract going to our overhead percentage. So when any number goes up on this company overhead margin sheet, each of the dollar amounts when calculating using percent margin goes up as well. Now, a couple of questions that have come in in this, Jordan, you even touched on it as well and it happens all the time in training. Does the company overhead and margin adjust when you add change orders? And the answer to that is actually no. Company overhead and margin is for original contract only. This is where you're setting your profit numbers for your original contract and it doesn't impact anything other than base estimate. So if you're looking over at the estimate summary section itself, you'll find base estimate here is now $508,000. The project total is 509 and that's because we have a change order in the estimate as well. Exterior veneer for $1,200. Now, if we click on this, it's actually going to take us directly to the exterior veneer section where you start to see the prices and the information coming together for this. And uh, we've got about $1,202 here. It rounds up to the nearest whole dollar. But this does not apply to the company overhead margin. If this were a million dollar change order, it is a flat million dollars unless you add a line item markup. So this is where coming into play, we have those profit numbers for change orders as well. And I hope that your change order percentage or your profit margins and everything like that for your change orders are actually higher than your original contract. Because as I'm sure we all know, change orders, bit of a pain in the rear, means we also have to adjust everything for the job to fit this one little piece. Might not be much, but the plans are probably gonna change just a little bit. The scope is changing a little bit. The schedule is gonna be impacted by this. We gotta take the time to draw up more contracts. All of these addendums mean that we need to make more money on those. And the easiest way to make more money is to turn on the line item markup columns and apply those percentages that we're looking for in there as well. Now to do that, we just need you guys to go up to the view menu, go to show hide columns, and make sure that you turn on the line item markups and, and uh, dollar markup columns. There they are. Now in this area, you'll find the line item markup has a percentage associated with it, and the dollar markup just gives you the dollar representation for that as well. Then it comes together for a total price to your client, and as you can see right now, this is woefully small. This is way smaller than it needs to be. If you guys ever need to make an adjustment, just click into the line item markup column, and you guys can actually adjust it directly here. It can either be a new percentage or a fixed dollar amount on the contract itself. Now, if it is a percentage, keep in mind that this is going to be applying a markup to the cost of this line item. It is by nature percent of costs. So if you've got a 20% margin on the job, this actually needs to start at a 25% of costs to match. Now, again, we're doing a 22%, which means that it needs to be higher than 22% uh, margin rather for the contract, which means that it should be higher than 25% since 25 is 25% 25 of costs is the same as 20% margin. Trust me, you guys can try this if you want to take a look at it, um, but that's that's how it works out in this case. So if we've got 22% margin, we could do the math to figure out the exact number, or we could just say, let's make it 35%. Make a little bit of extra money on that, and it's a comfortable number. Now, once you do that, again, we're now building into the mar we're building the markup into the cost of the change order itself. When this goes over to QuickBooks, QuickBooks still has the option to pull that out and put it in the markup column so that your QuickBooks estimate versus actuals report still reflects everything accurately. It's going to give you the estimated cost versus the actual cost, the estimated price versus the invoiced amount. Now, in Construction Suite, we do the same thing. 
When you start to put all of these prices and all this information together and you save your estimate, from the reports tab, you'll find a, a slew of financial reports. And this is the answer for those companies that have a bookkeeper that doesn't want anybody touching their QuickBooks. Um, I find that happens all the time as well, and I'm comfortable with that. I was the same way. I didn't want anybody else jumping into my books, especially not some guy on the job side who is just trying to get a rough idea of whether or not he's hitting his budget numbers since he thinks he has to go out and buy another $1,000 worth of materials for the job. Does he know? Maybe. If I'm doing my job, this actual cost would be relatively up to date. And if he wants to run a quick report just to make sure that he's hitting his numbers, all he has to do is open up the estimate and run the estimate versus actuals report. Now this is going to actually pull out all of the areas in the estimate itself that are different. Like, we, and, and by that I mean if the estimated cost and the actual cost don't line up, if they don't have a variance of zero, then we need to pay attention to these items. And this report, which is a little different than QuickBooks does it, this report is designed to show you those discrepancies. It pulls out all of those differences and says, this is where we need to focus, this is what we need to fix, fix it soon so that we can make sure that we hit our targets. Again, I'm looking for plus or minus 2% as a variance on this one. If I end the job, and this is a half million dollar job, if I end the job and we're $200 over budget, eh, I think we did okay, especially since that contingency of 2% might not have got touched. So again, with these things in mind, if we're hitting those kind of targets, then we're actually coming in pretty close to our estimated amounts, and the estimated amounts shouldn't ever be changing. Now, as we look at this again, this estimate versus actuals report is going to give you a lot of different information. If you guys are using the base sections, the base settings, it's going to show you estimated cost, actual cost, variance. And it's only going to give you those items where the variance is enough to pay attention to, really. But of course, some people like to see everything in one report, or if you're doing a cost plus project, it might actually be beneficial to go through and include these first three check boxes, which give you areas that are marked as options. Maybe those options could or could not be included on the job. Uh, sections with no value, meaning we haven't estimated a cost for it, but there could be an actual cost. It could have been an unforeseen expense that wasn't part of the contract. Um, we also have the areas with zero actual cost. Those are typically going to be estimated, but we haven't started spending on them yet. Also good to include, especially if you're doing cost plus projects. So plug those in, generate the report, and it gives you a, a very nice table. And if you guys want to make the report look a little bit more professional as well, you can always edit the template right here to do things like adding in your letterhead or applying your standard verbiage or whatever it might be. So again, you have the estimate versus actuals report. We're all pretty familiar with this one, I hope. If you guys aren't, run the report, take a look at what it gives you. Under financials, you'll also find things like estimate versus invoiced. How much did we plan on charging the customer? How much have we charged them so far? And how much is my last bill going to be? Or my last invoice, rather. I should call it an invoice since that's what they're all, they are in QuickBooks. Um, when we take a look at the committed versus actuals, committed costs are going to be all the purchase orders that we've sent to QuickBooks. If you're not using the PO system in QuickBooks, I've got a lot of videos on YouTube that talk about why it's a really, really smart move to start. If you, if you don't want to use the purchasing system in QuickBooks, that's fine. Use the POs anyway and just use those POs as a means to get your um, subcontractor contracts into QuickBooks that you can then bill off of in the same way that we send the estimate over to QuickBooks and invoice off of it. Same principle, same concept, and it makes that communication between your, um, your, your actual production staff and your bookkeeping team really, really streamlined. So again, saving you time, which in essence saves you money as well. Big important things to get in there as well. Now again, committed versus actual, this is how much did we think we were going to spend with our vendors, how much did we actually spend, um, again, estimate versus invoice, how much did we think it was going to cost, how much did it actually cost, how much did we think we'd make, what did it actually cost, or how much did we actually make, everything is costing with me now, um, but the all-important profitability report in here is, is as well, this is how much did we spend versus how much did we make. This is a great tool for allowing you to figure out if your estimated costs are covered based on how much you charged your customer. So with a profitability report, it literally just goes through the entire estimate and says, we projected to spend this much, we collected this much for that specific item, did it cover our cost? If it didn't cover our cost, then the next estimate that we run needs to have that cost bumped up a little bit to cover it the next time. So again, when you're finishing out one of these jobs, or when you're finishing out sections of these jobs, 
profitability report is invaluable. You definitely want to take a look at this one. It's really going to pay off in dividends. Just taking a look at the profitability report when you finish these things up. And of course, the all important remaining balance report. Again, how much is left out there? What do we need to plan for? Did we hit our targets? All of that comes together. Now, why is this all important? In Construction Suite, we do a phenomenal job of examining things job by job. The WIP report gives you a bird's eye view for that. QuickBooks gives you an overall. I hope all of you have a QuickBooks budget for the year and a QuickBooks budget for next year. All of these things that we're talking about and examining these jobs should provide a lot greater insight as to whether or not you're going to get close to that budget. Except in this case, you can start to plan for it now. And it's only the second month of the year. So again, if you're starting to make sure that you guys are hitting your budget numbers or, or what you think is going to happen over the course of the year, then you can plan accordingly. Do we need to pick up a couple of more jobs? So the first two months of the year are already coming in a little lighter. Are we actually pretty solid? Does our backlog look pretty full? Are we covered until uh, October maybe? Or how do we need to, again, accommodate for these various different things? All of this is all about just getting that little bit of extra insight back to that... Uh, uh, back to that, um, what were we talking about earlier, Jordan? You called it business intelligence? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so what we're looking at in this case is just better, smarter decisions about what we can do moving forward. And it almost all comes from the numbers. Now, granted, I'm a QuickBooks Pro advisor. <laughs> I deal with the numbers every day. I love numbers. If you guys don't love numbers, just remember one thing. Most companies that come in building things like WIP reports or trying to organize their actual costs and just do job costing in QuickBooks typically spend 25 to 30 hours a month just entering the data. With Construction Suite, we already have the data. Now it's just a matter of pushing it back and forth. And if you guys push the button, you'll notice that it takes 30 seconds or less to do that. Even if you guys have 50 or 60 jobs in your WIP report and you've got to update them all, you can click a button to open the estimate, click a button to import your costs, and then push the options over to QuickBooks or pull the options back, save it, and it updates your WIP. Again, you're taking 30 hours of work in a, in a, in a month and you're turning it into maybe a half an hour on a Thursday afternoon when you guys might not have too much else going on. That is an insanely valuable trade-off. It's huge. So if you guys have the opportunity to go in there and do that, just remember QuickBooks integration drives the WIP. The WIP is going to be the, the bird's eye view of your company. It really helps you take uh, the, the pulse of the company at any given point. Take a look at it at least a couple of times a month. Not normally too much more than that unless you guys are billing really, really regularly and invoicing really, really regularly. But again, once or twice a month, really valuable. Take those snapshots no less than once a month. And as you guys are working your way through this, you'll always have a clearer idea of how your job is doing. So the next time the accountant says, so where do you guys think you are with the GP? You'll be able to answer it in a heartbeat. I was looking at my whip earlier today. We're at 19.5%. I'd rather push it up to 21. So that's our plan moving forward the next quarter. So we're going to do it. We're going to get it done. Um, so what else? What, did we, what have we missed on this? Uh, I know we're at about the hour mark. Um, and we've still got a couple of questions here to go over. Uh, I noticed one that just popped in here. Do you have a YouTube video that talks about the profitability report? We should have several, several for the financial reports. I don't know if there's specific to each individual, but take a look for the Sweet Talk videos specifically. Under the QuickBooks integration tab, there should be some Sweet Talk videos that talk about those. Um, as far as the rest of them go, uh, we'll be touching on those in just a couple of moments. But at this point, I think we've covered most of the profitability aspects of the Construction Suite software and how it works with QuickBooks. Again, most important tools that you're going to be looking at. When you guys are working through the estimates, if you're using the QuickBooks integration, you don't have anything extra to do for the WIP. The WIP is automatically filling itself in. Construction Suite is already taking care of all of that for you. All you have to do is go back to the Today page and click on the tab. And there it is. Now, if you guys have any additional questions or anything like that, again, we'll be re recording this one and providing it for you guys on YouTube. Otherwise, we'll be stepping into the Q&A section here in just a couple of moments. But for those of you guys who are um, pretty comfortable with what you've seen today and you guys are ready to go out there and start pushing buttons and start seeing these reports, at this point, we'll go ahead and let you guys go. Once again, though, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you, Jordan, for being here and helping out with the questions and everything like that. Uh, guys, it's been a pleasure. Um, Jordan, any last words of wisdom before we uh, cut them loose? 
do the work. You're already doing most of the activities required to put this together. Like I said, you don't have to go out and hire a business analyst. Take a look, familiarize yourself with what your business is really up to. Familiarize yourself with the numbers. You know, sometimes this might be a little scary, but honestly, if you uh, spend just a few moments, once or twice a month, as you had mentioned, to really get an idea of where you stand on your jobs, you're gonna have, be so much more equipped to continue to push for and drive for better success and, and much more, honestly, like happiness in the future. And that's something that I've seen with the clients I've been working with uh, as they really dig into what they're up to uh, and what they're hoping to achieve this year in 2018 and beyond. Mm. Yeah, that's a really good point. And, and by the way, in case we haven't said it already, all of the successful clients that we've had for the past 10 or 15 or 20 years, they all have some tool like this WIP report that they use, that they review, that they touch on from time to time. Successful companies tend to have this kind of things because as they're running, everybody's focused on what they are working on at that time. Everybody has tunnel vision. This is the nature of work. We all want to focus on exactly what we're working on right now. This WIP report is Construction, Suite, Construction Suite's way of just saying, hey, don't forget, we have a company and the company is running like a well-oiled machine and I can prove it. This is all the information that we have. This is where we stand on these eight jobs. This is our overbillings. We need to collect on some of these underbillings. Let's go out there and get it done. So again, remember it's all there. It's ready for you. All you have to do is just go pick it up. Now again, with that, we're gonna step into Q&A. So once again, guys, for those of you who are pretty comfortable, confident that you can get out there and start at least reviewing and recapping these things, I wanna thank you guys so much for joining us today. Once again, this is Ian Schaefer, uh, my colleague Jordan with Sales, and uh, we have been covering WIP and profitability, and that's gonna wrap us for today. Don't forget to take a look on YouTube and join us on Friday, three o'clock central. We're actually gonna be taking a look at construction suite built for the surface and some of the mobility options that you guys will have with that and the mobile apps and how the things communicate back and forth with all of this different technology that's available. Almost wish that we could tie AWS in there as well, but hey, we already did that one, so <laughs> we're good to move on to the next one. So once again, guys, thanks so much. Hopefully we'll see you guys on Friday, three o'clock central, if you can join us for that one. Otherwise. I think we've uh, used up as much of your time with the numbers. Guys, thanks again for joining us, and I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Take care.